So for this video we're going to look at um, the basics of probability. Um, obviously for that we need to know a little bit about set theory and so I made another video um, that you can check at, out if, uh, if you need to know a bit more about set theory because this, this seems to be uh, a little too hard. So, um, so first off, when we talk about probability, we usually need to restrict ourselves to a set of possible outcomes. We call this thing a sample space. Now, a sample space is the sort of set of all possible outcomes. Um, so, in an experiment. And then you can then you can also define something uh, called an event. So it's one particular oh, event, I guess, outcome um, E, which is uh, an element of S, or it can also be a sub uh, a subset of S. It's necessarily a subset of S. Anyhow, um, so, so our sample space S defines all the things we could possibly be looking at and then events are what could actually uh, take place. So let's look at an example. So throwing two dice. So if we throw two dice we could look at, for example, we could define an event. Um, so first, let's actually let's say what our S is. So S is the set of all uh, combinations of D1, D2, um, you know, uh, where D1 and D2 are um, values rolled on on dice one and dice two, respectively. So that it's the set of all combinations of those possible um, of those possible dice. So let's look at an event E. Um, and let's say that the first dice, the first die, is a 6. So this event here would correspond to actually a union of a bunch of events. So E is actually 6-1 um, union, 6 uh, Two, six, three, six, four. Um, actually, it'd be better if I just put commas because these are elements in a set to not get it confused. So six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, and six, six. So we can see that we can take an event here and define it as a set of smaller events or more specific ones rather. In this case um, we're saying the first die is a 6. Well the possible outcomes are 6 1, 6 2, 6 3, 6 4, 6 5, and 6 6. And so that makes up our event E. And E is an element of S because S has all of the possible outcomes. So starting with 1, 1, 1, 2, dot, 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 all the way down to 6, 1, 6, 2, all the way to 6, 6, 1, 6. So that has all the possible events. So when we look at um, so now that we know what an event is and what a sample space is, um, 
we'd want to look at what is a probability of that event. So what P of E, what does this mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about what, pro what rules do probabilities follow. The first rule is that probabilities are always positive. So for any event, um, you're going to have a probability that's between 0 and 1. You can have a probability of 2, 200% likelihood of something happen is no different than 100% likelihood. So another one is going to be P of S is going to be 1, meaning your sample space for your experiment or your whatever you want to measure probabilities on has to include absolutely everything. You can't say, aha, actually what you didn't consider was this thing. You know, for example, um, if you look at what are all the possible outcomes of a pitcher um, throwing, uh, a str uh, throwing a ball at a baseball game. And you say, well, he could have a strike, um, he could throw a ball, um, he could uh, hit the catcher and, you know, knock him out, uh, he could, uh, uh, you know, completely miss and break his arm, I guess. I mean, you, you, could, you could start, and as long as you were um, honest and you, you put all of the things that could happen, then the fact that the pitcher threw a ball and hit a bird in mid-flight and it knocked that bird out, the probability of that happening within our sample space is zero because we didn't really allow for that thing to, to happen in our model. And that's really the kind of the point about the sample space is sort of limiting what you're looking at and what you're assigning probabilities to. Um, if you wanted to assign probabilities to absolutely everything, then I mean it would wind up, it would lose any sense because you could ask yourself the question, what is the, the likelihood or the probability of something weird happening somewhere in the entire world? It's pretty high. What's the likelihood of someone throwing a pitch and knocking a bird out in midair during a specific baseball game if you, if you ask the question before the game takes place? Probably pretty low. What's the probability of, it, of something like that happening and then being shocked by it? Pretty high. So defining what your sample space is really um, makes it clear what you're what you're looking at in terms of probabilities. So the third one here is going to be um, so given a sequence of disjoint events. So e1, e2, dot dot dot, such that. Oops, such that E1 or EI, sorry, intersect EJ is empty if I is not equal to J. So these are disjoint events. Then the probability of the union from I equals 1 to infinity of these events. So we can have a countable, in, infinite but countable uh, set of events, then that's going to be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the probabilities of each of those things. And the thing that, makes, that really makes it okay to do this is the fact that there's no overlapping um, uh, probabilities there. So these are pretty much our rules for probabilities, and these are the ones that we, we would use to um, to come to use to, to, to answer any probability questions we have. So we can we can give an example. So suppose we, we go back um, to the, the dice example, um, two dice being thrown. Um, okay, so we want to ask for example, what is the probability of um, having a uh, one uh, having a one appear on one of the 
die. The dice. What is the probability of having a one appear on one of the dice? So the first thing we can do is just look at what are all the the ways of, of getting that. So we have um, one one, one two, one three, one four, one five, one six. We have six one. Six two, oops, five one. Sorry, five one, four one, uh, three one, and two one. So, if we look at all the different possibilities of of these uh, of these outcomes, we know that there are one two three four five six six by six. Um, possible outcomes in S. So the cardinality of S is 36. And we're going to call this E, our event. And the cardinality of our event E is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So since we're going to assume that all these dice are all fair, um, then the probability that we would associate to this would just be the number, uh, since each of these outcomes are equiprobable, we would just count the number of outcomes in our event divided by the number of outcomes we'd have in our sample space. So probability of E would be um, E divided by S, which would just be 11 over 36. As you can see there. So um, now we'd want to know what if, what if uh, we add another probability and say, what is the probability of? Did I say the union? Yeah. Okay. So what if we add another probability? So another question rather. Um, what? is the probability of obtaining 2-2 uh, two, two or 3-3. Three, three. Well, in this case, you have our E2 to be equal to 2-2 um, two, two and 3-3. Three, three. The cardinality of an E2 is going to be 2. And so the probability of E2 is going to be um, just 2 over, or another. Cardinality of E2 divided by cardinality of S is going to be 2 over 36. The cardinality is the number of elements inside the set. So now what, we, what, what happens if we ask, what about E3 equal to E1 or E2, where I called this E, but let's call it E1. Okay, so now we're asking the question, what's the probability of having a 1 somewhere or having either 2, 2, or, or 3, 3? Well, we noticed that E1 and E2 is empty. So 2, 2, and 3, 3 appear nowhere in this, meaning we can use this third rule here to get that probability. So probability of E1 union E2 is going to be probability of E1 plus E2, which is going to give us so the E21 we just did, that, that was 2 over 36 plus, and the other one was 11 over 36. And so that's going to give us 13 over 36. And that's our answer. So that's a very brief um, outline of some of the basics of uh, probability.